Dear readers of my language book, Human Language Evolution, that came out in 2012 in Bloomington, Indiana, with the publisher iUniverse.com, I want here to give you some insight how the semantic concepts in this book, which also gave rise to psychological <laughs> archetype constructions that account for the conservatism in languages, which we believe has a counterpart in neuropsychology, and we now tested 34 such semantic fields across a large array of languages from all over major language phyla of the world, which might be around eight language phyla, in quite independent ones, but also they are also interconnected as long distance uh, etymologists today believe, and this is a very good hypothesis, if we follow on starling.rynet.ru uh, the proceedings of the Russian and also American scientists, we see that uh, there is tremendous progress on the side of long-range etymologists and even on the side of the construction of proto-world roots. So we here would like to s tell you how, in my book, these concepts, these psychological concepts, <coughs> have also a high value for language learners, for instance, of a different language, which is not of the same language family as you always speak. So most of persons here in this world uh, if not from China, let's say, but many persons have uh, original hometown tongue, which is Indo-European. These are all <coughs> with the major world languages like French, Spanish, Italian, Russian, German, Hindi, Bengali, English. So, um, if these learners want to learn a uh, new language family like Finno-Ugric, then they might rely on my concept because it gives them a high array of links <coughs> how to remember new words in a new language. I will here tell you a list of around 20 words and we will see that the initial consonants perfectly match my theory here, although we didn't include these languages in my book and also in my research until now, but uh, you will see that my language theory has still a lot of languages which can be detected with uh, similar statistical uh, distribution of matches. So here I go into first into ethnic and then into Finnish. So hot and this hot and dry are concepts which I did not yet include into my language theory but which I am now in the next step. I see that hot and and dry are a, a similar uh, language semantic group that uh, hot things are often dry and dry things are brittle and brittle things again have this movement of breaking which in my theory is often associated with the most coarse consonant which is K. And exactly here in ethnic and Finnish, 
I think we come across a very ancient language roots in Euroasiatic and Austroasiatic. And this is why the matches are very good. So hot in ethnic is cool. And in Finnish is um, Kuma. <coughs> Dry in ethnic is queef, in Finnish is queeva. Then to tickle, this is a other field which is often associated with K like consonants, as we associate tickling also with scratching, <coughs> and scratching again with painful feelings. So to tickle might be connected to this short circuit of reasoning. In many languages you found to tickle is associated with K like first consonants, velars or uvelars, like Q or K. And here perfectly again in ethnic we have Kodi and in Finnish we have Kutita. Kutita. Then stone, which is a hard structure, is also in a language field, in a semantic field for K, and we have here in Finnish. I will now stay here with Finnish, as ethnic is really mainly very similar to Finnish, <coughs> although the endings are rather shorter in ethnic. But there is a high level of congruence between these two languages, as they are also quite kin, of course. But we will stay with the amazement here from Finnish. So, stone is kiwi, kiwi. And the bark, the bark is the outermost part of a tree, which is often cut with a knife and this is then <coughs> also a K like semantic field and it's in Finnish it's Garna and to ask is often uh, associated with uh, the, move, the attention marker K plus a U for the direction sensing for the wideness of the search and <coughs> in Finnish we have Gisya for to ask. This again makes much sense. And then we go to another consonant which is the lateral L which consumes not much energy and has a durative effect. <laughs> As we found it in, in uh, words like light in English and also uh, slack and so on. So lazy in Finnish, which is also in the semantic field of slack laziness, is laiska. And slack is loisa. And lax is loiha. Then another semantic field is the one of me and of to suckle and the mother. And to suckle in Finnish is imea. So here again the attachment of the breast and the lips are the first archetypal uh, association of to suckle and we find here the M represented here and then also me in Finnish is Mina public case of I and we associate M as a feeling of pleasure while suckling for little baby at the breast of the mother and then also the the meanest feeling, the egoistic feeling of joy, of pleasure, 
when speaking about oneself. So this is in many many Eurasiatic languages, but also other languages around the world, associated with the M. And here we have Mina in Finnish, and also the memory as. Uh, uh, type of processing of information and we associate it with M in many languages and so also here in Finnish. It's musty. Memory is musty. So again good correspondence here to the first bilabial continent M as in mother. We had around four or five semantic fields linked to M in our book. The one was for mother, second one was for pleasurable feelings, the third one was for important persons and things, and the fourth one was for memory, to memorize. And again we found this represented in the independent <laughs> data set here in English. The words per se have not a full uh, parallel in Indo-European, but at least this first starting consonant matches my theory. And uh, so here we go to see if S is a scattering, uh, dispersing airstream around the tongue. And also, it's a continuation of the alveolar D in some languages. So, C um, for the C is Soila in Finnish. We go here once more to ethnic to see it's Soila in ethnic, yes. And the C is Semen in. Finnish seeds are also here to scatter on the earth and so here we again associate it with the S and so we see here that our language theory is very well uh, <coughs> received by uh, learners of Finnish maybe uh, they will have a rich inventory of memory bridges where they can build upon that. This is really a quite interesting thing. So if we go to other languages we will find that maybe the percentage will, won't, won't be as high as in Finnish. If we go for instance to Armenic we will see or also to Celtic that these languages might have a long cultural history, you know, as Celtic have already some kind of <coughs> um, proficient uh, dwelling culture. So there are a lot of changes in the initial consonants. For instance, also S tends to get lost the initial symbol in S can get lost or parallelized and this will change the immediateness of the psychological semantic field. But still we will find a lot of matches across many many languages uh, as I did this in my book here human language evolution so thank you for being with me for being with me and have a nice continuation of your language studies